What's up, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this I want to talk about what's happening with the market very, very quickly. I'm going to break down some very important levels to watch for and what's happening with these charts. But just note that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out my Weeble link. If you deposit any amount of money, you're guaranteed 12 free stocks. If you deposit $500, you're guaranteed 20 in total. Deposit $25,000 or more, you're guaranteed 75. And offer ends in just about two weeks. Anyways, now let's talk about the market. So if you look at Tesla, this thing is actually looking a little bit more bearish on the daily time frame. We have our 200 EMA at 214 acting as a key support. Now, if Tesla were to lose this, there's going to be a risk of it coming all the way down to about that very low 202 area. So there is a risk of more downside if we lose that key support. And if that level fails us, we're going to be going all the way down to about the, the 190s pretty quickly. So just, just want to give you guys a warning about that. But I think about Tesla's, we're seeing buyers trying to defend it or trying to hold it out, especially as they got their approval to expand their Berlin plants. That's a good piece of news. But is it really enough to get us to balance? The answer is not necessarily. We're not really seeing a big bounce. I mentioned everyone, there's still downside potential in Tesla looking at the trend, but we'll be watching these key levels. So as a reminder, today is Tuesday, October 15th. There's not really much data left for the day. We just have a couple of Fed speakers like Kugler and Bostic giving speeches. But besides that... Uh, there are some tensions rising in the Middle East with the whole Israel-Iran situation. I do want to note that's important, uh, but things haven't escalated to the point where we're seeing retaliation or anything like that, right? Uh, the history goes back years and years. I'm just talking about what happened very, very recently. So with the market slowing down, this is also affecting Tesla. This is why Tesla's a little bit lackluster. Um, but I think that we're just in a range right now. I mentioned to everyone we might be, we might be looking for about a 225 rebound and potential rejection there. That's where our previous support human resistance happened to be. And we had, an, we had an imbalance on the four hour time from around there. So that's why Tesla kind of rebounded only to reject. So what's happening now is we're forming a very, very indecision candle. I think that Tesla is going to be very range bound for the time being. Uh, there is a risk of us dipping a little bit lower back down to about the 214 area maybe later on. But I think we're just going to range trade between two, the 214 and then the low 220s just for the time being. Now, we could dip lower if we lose that 214 support if we close below this two days in a row. But for now, despite this bearish trend, I think Tesla is going to shuffle for some time. For SPY, I want to say that SPY is looking a little bit weaker. But, uh, you know, we also have this gap to fill taking us all the way down to about the 579 area. But when, <laughs> when you look at the four-hour time frame, we're approaching our 20 EMA. That happens to be around 579. So it's going to be our key support, followed by the 575 uh, area below that. So looking at the charts, we have a very, very nice-looking uh, rising wedge that's technically still forming. Notice that we did attempt to break through that just temporarily only to come back down. So right now, the market's showing a little bit of weakness, at least right over there. And there is a risk of SPY coming down a little bit lower to about 579 to fill that gap. We'll see if 580 holds. If not, 579 should be watched, followed by the lower trend line right over here, which is where our next support is. Very close to 576 to 575. So it's going to be your supports. I think we might decline a little bit more. Then we'll see what kind of reaction we get. For others out there, we have ES. ES pushed all the way up to about 59.25, a little bit under my target before coming back down. We're testing 58.70 as support. If it does not hold, we could be tipping closer to about 58.30. I see a risk of that looking at the four-hour time frame, so keep that in mind, guys, just to be safe. For others out there, we also have NVIDIA. NVIDIA is kind of rejecting here as well off this bearish divergence. We pushed up to 140, but I see this is going to be a very, very tough area, so be careful up here. And because we didn't hold 133.74, we're now looking at 129 as our main support. If that fails us, we could be looking for a move back down to about 125 for NVIDIA. So watch 133 is resistance and 125 is our main support below that. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin's pushing to about 68,000. If we break that, we're going to be looking for a bigger pump. It still looks a little bit more bullish, especially because of some bullish news that came out. So not bad whatsoever. For others out there, we have NQ. NQ is dipping right here. We're looking at 20,350 as our support at the 50 EMA. If it holds this, it could rebound for 20,500. And if this fails us, we're going to be dipping lower. Right now, it's looking a little bit weaker. I could see this dip a little bit lower, closer to, to about 20,200, a little bit more. And we'll see if we bounce off that area right over here. So 20,200 is going to be our next target. I think we might get closer to that area before it tries to bounce. Coinbase, not Coinbase, the QQQ, and I'll talk about Coin a little bit later. This is also dipping a bit. I see a risk of about four, a little bit under 489. It could dip a little bit more before it attempts to rebound. We'll see if we hold 488.81 or not. 
If that fails us, though, we could be tipping to the mid 480s. But for now, we're looking at 488.81. For Apple, Apple pumped very nicely to about 238, only to come back down. We're testing pre previous resistance becoming support at 233.5. If that fails us, we're looking for a potential target to 230. So keep that in mind. For the IWM Russell 2000, we pushed very nicely to 225. We're struggling to hold above that. So I could be looking for a risk of us coming back down to about 222 if the market continues this, this like dip that's coming. So there might be a little dip coming to 222. So keep that in mind. For Coinbase, we push very nicely to about this 200 area. If it rejects here, we're looking for basically 191 as our support. And I see a risk of that potentially coming as well. For Amazon, we have a slanted... You can interpret this as a slant to hedge rules. I'm not really worried about that, though. I think we're holding it very, very well. But we have to see if 186.2 holds us. If we lose that, we're looking for 183.61. And if that holds, we're looking for a rebound for 188. I think 186.2 is going to be retested on Amazon. If that fails us, we're going to be dipping all the way down towards the 183.6 uh, to 184 area. For meta, we're range bound. We have 588 as resistance and then 581 as our support. We're kind of stuck in the middle. If we break 588, we're going to be looking for a bigger push for 592. And if we lose 581, we're going to be looking for a dip back down towards 575. So we're stuck in between the 20 and 50 EMAs, and we'll see what happens after this. Uh, but for now, I just think we're going to remain range bound for some time. So it's just range bound. If you look at the last couple of days, Meta has been stuck in the 580s, not really doing much. For Microsoft, we pushed very nicely to our 200 EMA only to reject. So we need to reclaim to uh, 419. If 419 is reclaimed, this will rebound. There is a possible inverse entry, so I see potential for this. We have to break past 422. If we fail to do so, we're at risk of dipping all the way down to about 413. So keep that in mind, guys. And then we have Google. Google pushed up to 168, but I warned everyone to be careful uh, because despite the fact that we were trying to push we're struggling to break past the same resistance. So notice how we had resistance between the 168 to 170 range. For the last couple of weeks, it kind of hit that, rejected, hit this, rejected, hit this, rejected. So there is a risk of us coming back down to about 165 if 168 does not break. So please keep that in mind. I also want to mention the VIX is trying to rebound. So the VIX did come down to fill this gap, came very close to filling it. Will the VIX continue to dip to fill this gap and then bounce? Could the market try to rebound a little bit before it continues lower? Uh, I do want to call out that the VIX still has this gap up here around the 35 area. So if we get a breakout above 24, I think there's a risk of us coming up to fill that gap. And there could be a big increase in volatility in the markets, which could drag Tesla and other things lower. So just keep that in mind. The dollar is also breaking out so far. It does not guarantee anything about the markets looking at the historical trends, at least for the last couple of like weeks. But for now, there is some weakness building, and this is what's slowing Tesla down. Tesla was trying to rebound today, but it really failed to hold up. So we'll see how things go. Tomorrow, there's going to be another attempt by Tesla to try to rebound back up to about 225, in my opinion. But there's also a strong possibility that even if we rebound a bit, we might not last. We might we might kind of like pop and drop like how we did today. Today, Tesla hit like just under 225 only to come back down. So there's a risk of us doing the same thing again. So just keep that in mind, guys. Tesla's range bound for now, not really doing much. But with that being said, I thank you all so much for listening. Please have a great day, guys. Uh, I'll be back for another update very soon. Uh, I thank you all one more time. So have a great day and peace out.